you have your Bibles, uh, open them to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4 for the today and the next two weeks to follow. I'm going to be talking about the second coming of Christ. That's why we want to talk about hold the fort. Christ is coming. We've got a job to do while we're here. So you may be asking the question, why do you want to preach on the second coming? I love the question, why? Because when you, when you answer that question, you understand the, the meaning and purpose. So number one, the reason why is because there's more in the Bible talking about the second coming of Christ than the first coming of Christ. Do y'all know that? If it speaks more of that, if Jesus spoke more of that, then I think that's something that we need to, to look at and talk about. Uh, also, I know of no other prophecy that needs to be fulfilled before Christ comes. The term that is there is imminent return of Christ. It could happen today. Now, how many of you believe it's going to happen today? No, no, no. You say I, I, it could. But it, how many of you made preparation that if Christ comes today, you're ready? How many of you have today made preparation? Or we're just walking through our day? When it means imminent, it means imminent. It means it could be the next thing that happens. It's the next prophecy to be fulfilled. It's there for us in times. Have you ever heard anybody talk about in times? All those things. Uh, you don't need to turn there, but I want to read you some verses that the Lord gave me a few months ago. I didn't know really when it was going to come in, and I'm going to do it this morning. It's not going to be our major text, but just listen to 2 Timothy chapter 3. This is Paul's last letter, okay? But know this. That in the last time, perilous times will come. The word perilous means dangerous, hard to bear. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, Unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, I love this next one, headstrong, that includes us Baptists, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. From such people turn away. Let me just ask you, does that sound like today? Are we living in last days? If we're not, I'm deceived. Matter of fact, you can just see the things unfolding. If it's last days and it's imminent return, if there's nothing else that needs to be fulfilled until, if we're going to be affected by it, if those that we love are going to be affected by it, if our mission is not accomplished, if our purpose in our life is not yet fulfilled, then we need to understand that. And if this is the next major event unfolding in God's plan, we don't need to be ignorant about it. So in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, would you stand with me in verse 13 in honor of the reading of God's Word? But I do not want you to be ignorant. That means uninformed, unaware. My prayer today is that when we leave this place, we cannot plead ignorance because we're going to know what God has for us to know about this. He says, I want you, don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, those who have previously died, lest you sorrow 
as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Now hear this last part. Therefore, because of these words, because of these truths that we hold, now we now hold and we Hold on to, comfort one another with these words. Let's pray. Now, Lord, this is your word for us. You let it on the heart of God to unfold these great things before us. You put it upon Jesus to speak about it. You put upon the Apostle Paul, by the way, the, the leadership of the Holy Spirit to, to do this word for us. So, Lord, let us hear it. I pray for clear preaching. I pray for ears that are in tune with you. I pray, O oh Lord, for hearts that are open to your word, minds that are attentive. Lord, uh, a spirit that seeks your will first. Father, we are your servants. For those of us who know Jesus as our Savior and Lord, we are the soldiers of the cross. We are to take up our cross and follow you. Father, help us know what to do. Oh, Jesus, may your anointing be in this room today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Paul loved this church at Thessalonica, the church there, the people of the Thessalonians. And he did not want them to uh, be ignorant of it. What they ha had happened was there was a uh, word that had gone through that those people who had already died would miss the second coming of God. And it was almost like they knew that it was coming and they, they, they really thought this is in times. They thought it's coming soon and, and I'm fearful that those people who have died have, have already missed the second coming. So let's talk about death real quick here. When a person who is a believer in Jesus Christ, when they die, when they leave, leave this world behind, they breathe their last breath, the, the body dies and will be buried and put into a grave. It will be uh, burned up. It will, it will just, from dust we came to dust we will return. But the spirit that lives forever goes to be with the Lord in a place that is now called heaven. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. So when we say goodbye, we say hello. We don't have to go to some place to, to, to wait around a while to see if the train's coming for us. Or No, no, no. That's just, that's just the, I believe the, the biblical term for that is hogwash right? If you put your heart in the hands of Jesus, he will watch over you every day of your life. And when he calls you home, he will be there to take you home and you will be in heaven with him. Your spirit, your body will go to the grave. The unbeliever, the one that doesn't know Jesus Christ as a personal Savior and Lord, when they die, their body goes to the grave. <clears throat> but their spirit will be separated from God. They won't go to be with God in heaven. They will be going to a holding place that is called Gehenna or hell. And it will be hell. It will be hot. The presence of God, the nature of God, the love of God, the peace of God will not be there. You make your decisions now where you're going then. And if you don't choose Jesus, you'll be separated from Him. 
Now, there will be a resurrection for the believers. We're going to talk about that today. The unbelievers, they'll be raised at a different time on, and they will be judged at that time for all of their works. Their name will not be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. They'll be judged by their sin, and they'll be sentenced accordingly. They will hear the saddest word that Jesus will ever say. Die. Live in death. Depart from me. I don't know you as my child. Forever. Forever. D.L. Moody was in New York and he was with two men, preachers, and they came back to the place where Moody was staying in his room. And they, they were talking about the city of New York and to the window. They opened the, the large window and said, what do you see? And one said, well, I see all, the, I see all the, the beautiful architecture of all the great buildings. And he said, looked at the other one and said, what do you see? He said, I see the trees and the flowers and I see all of this glory of God, the skies, and it's, it's a glorious place. The river's there. It's just a wonderful place. They turned around and looked at Moody and they said, what do you see? And tears were flowing down his face. And he said, I see people many of whom are on their way to hell. That's what made Moody different. And yet, we often find ourselves in a place in love with the world and the things of the world and the ways of the world and what it brings to us. And, and I'm sad to say that will lead you to 2 Timothy 3 that I just read about of last days. And all those things, those terrible things that we read, should never be said about the people of God. So Paul says to these people at Thessalonica, you need to be different. You need to be ready. Because God's return, I'm going to say it again, is imminent. And you must be prepared. You must be ready. So look what it says in verse Number 15, for this we say to you by the word of the Lord, this is directly from God, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who are asleep. Those who have died, the body's in the grave, but their spirit's with the Lord. But that doesn't mean we're going to miss it. It says here, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. He will come with the spirits of those people who have already died. And there will be a resurrection of their body. They will receive their new body. And the spirit will be with their body. And they will go to meet the Lord in the clouds, in the air. But we who are alive, we will be changed, we're going to hear this term, in the twinkling of an eye. How fast is that? It's the speed that your eye sees the picture and translates it to your mind and your mind sees the picture and there's a knowledge that is there. It is faster than the blinking of an eye. We're moving into nanoseconds here. Now, I know some of you are slower than others. We don't need to worry about it. If we're in nanoseconds, we're good. And we will meet the Lord in the air. The dead in Christ will have their new bodies. We will be changed. We'll be with Christ in the air. And we get to, y'all ready for these two words? Go home. Y'all good with that? Y'all don't sound too thrilled. I mean, really, if we got to thinking about it, we could spend all afternoon thanking God for home. Amen. It's going to be a day. I hath not seen, ear hath not heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things that God has. What's the word? Prepared. 
for those who love him. I go, and if I go, I come back. I go to prepare a place for you. Prepare. That where I am, there you may be also. So he comes to gather his children home. Say it with me. Home. One more time. Home. Praise God. Praise God. Our eternity with Christ continues. Today we have a spirit. We walk as followers and disciples of Christ. We serve him now. Our mission is to worship Him. Our mission is to serve Him. Our mission is to be a part of His work on earth. That is our mission. It's not His mission to come join us on our work on earth. It is our mission to come and join Him on His mission on earth. But those days are going to come to an end. With a shout, with a voice, and with a trumpet. This is the sounds of His coming. It's a shout of victory for the saints. It's the voice of an archangel, so Satan can hear too. And it's the trumpet of God for those sinners that will be left behind. Let's look at these one at a time. Look what it says in verse 16. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a... Say it again. I like it how you respond to that. It's the shout of victory. It's for the saved. Folks, this is the only time you're going to see this word shout in all the Bible. Never again used. It is, it, it is an order. It is a command. It is a stimulating cry. When a general is with his soldiers, he may say to them this word, charge. Now the soldiers are ready. They may be nervous. They may be a little fearful. They may not understand what's going to ha happen in the next few moments, but they know when the general gives the command to go something within them, their emotions go from here to hear. Their adrenaline goes from here to here. You cannot not be excited. Everything is online here. And they go from fear to courage. They are stimulated and they go. The sheep know the voice of the shepherd. The soldiers know the voice of the commander. And he is going to come with a shout of victory. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he said, if there's any way this, this cup can pass for me. Nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. He was thinking about this. He was thinking about one soul getting saved at a time. He was thinking about one name being written in the book of life at a time. He was thinking about that time when the, the whisper would come to our heart. The still, small voice would urge, would draw, would woo, would love. He was thinking about when we, in our sins, condemned by our sins, found hope in Christ and turned away from our way and repented of our sins and our way and, and said, all my life I give to you. Come into my life. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. Be my Master. And what began with a, with a whisper becomes the leading voice in our life. And as we go through hardships and we go through predicaments and we pray and we get the ear of God 
And he's there with us, Emmanuel, never to leave us alone. Sometimes we don't know why. Sometimes we don't know how long. Sometimes, Lord, it's been so long. Lord, it's been so long. I'm just here to tell you, he's coming. And this time it won't be with a whisper. This time it will be with a shout. Can you just imagine the joy that you'll be receiving in your spirit when the voice of God calls your name and you meet him and you see him and the glory it will be? Oh, that will be glory for me. Glory for me, glory for me. When by His grace I shall look on His face, that will be glory, be glory for me. Oh, when He calls. I'm here to tell you He won't have to call twice. (laughs) Amen? You know what I'm going to say to this world? Bye. Amen? What a day. That will be the wisest thing that anyone can ever do is listen to the whisper of God so that they will hear the shout of God and give their heart and life to Christ where they can receive joy unspeakable and full of glory. The shout of victory. But he also says, I will come with the voice of an archangel. This is only used two times in Scripture. Right here in Thessalonians, And in Jude 9, where it's speaking of Michael, the archangel, because Michael in Jude 9 is is there contending with Satan. They're battling over what would be the the, the body of Moses and where Moses was buried. And, And we don't know all the things about that. That's a different sermon for a different day. But what we see is we see Michael, the archangel, coming and contending with Satan. That's not my battle. That's his battle. As a matter of fact, when Michael is contending, he says, I'm not going to fight against him. I'll just fight against him in the name of the Lord. He uses the power of God, which is something, if Michael wants to fight that way, that's probably a good way for us to fight too. We don't need to fight that battle. The battle belongs to the Lord, right? But you see what you see here is one of God's created beings. There is the cherubim and the seraphim and the archangels and the angels, and we see them together. In the book of Daniel, in chapter number 10, it talks about uh, the, the, the one that was fighting, Daniel that was, was there, and there was the one that was withheld. And Michael came, or that archangel came, Michael came, and, and he said, I was, I was held back 21 days because I was battling Satan. He contends. Now, it tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, that Satan is right now the prince of the power of the air. That means that this earth is under content, temporary, temporary, but is under the command of the ways of wickedness. And by the way, can't you see it? Now hold on. We know that God is sovereign over all. Amen? Nobody can limit God except himself. I can't limit him. Satan can't limit him. But what God has done is God has allowed Satan to, to have a little bit of a playground on this earth. And some choose to follow Satan and his evil ways. But some of us are wise enough to say, no, no, no. I want Jesus. I follow him. My knee bows to him. My knee does not bow to this world or the master of this world. There is, there is something better out there for me. Praise God for Jesus. Right? But he's the prince of the power of the air. Now hold on. When, when Jesus comes back to call these dead in Christ home, Satan doesn't want to give them up. So the voice of the archangel says, hey, sit still, be quiet, and shut up. 
We're going home and we're taking them with us. I don't understand all the politics of heaven. Satan, Lucifer, one day actually stood in the presence of heaven. What a privilege. But his stupid pride led him down the road of sin. Don't be so smug. Our pride has led us down that stupid road too, hasn't it? The wisest thing we ever did was to humble ourselves and choose Christ. We need to learn to do that every day. You know what he's doing here when he says the voice of the archangel? Jesus is just letting Michael just stand out and say, hey, you lose. I'm just stating it clear for every angel in heaven, we win. And for all one third of those angels who put their allegiance behind Lucifer and the ways of pride and the ways of this world, you lose forevermore. I'm going to tell you one thing. Satan is a smug guy. He's a dirty dog. He's good at what he does. All he wants to do is divide and conquer. All he wants to do is get people pointing at each other and talking about each other and shooting at each other. Don't ever join him. Christians, we should never shoot our wounded. We should love them in the name of Jesus. Amen? We should never condemn them. We're not their judge. We should encourage them in the power of God. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation, not alienation. We are to be together. I'm not going to always understand your point of view. I'm not going to always agree with your point of view, but I choose to love you. I'm not going to let anything get in the way. If the church could just get a glimpse of the love of God now and the, and the hope of that now, if we could just let a little bit of that light shine in, we could just, we would be so much more happy. But Satan wants us to follow him. Michael's just making it real plain and clear. You lose. Number three. The voice, then we hear the shout, but it, lastly it says there's the trump of God. I don't know who's blowing it. Some say Gabriel. I don't know. I was going to do something mean. My son plays trumpet, and he always sits in the balcony. And you know what I was going to do about this time? I was going to scare some of y'all to death. I was going to let him turn loose with that high C and the altars would have been full. Amen? But I'm not mean like that. I'm just mischievous and think of it. Bring the announcement is what it's saying. Alert! Bring the announcement. Something's changed. You know, if you were a general, there are certain things that you would tell your troops. You would blow charge. But you know, sometimes when he was ready, he would blow recall. And he would bring some of his soldiers home. They knew what that meant. Now, hold on. The war is not over because when he calls the saints out of here and we go back with him to heaven, their battle's really just going to get stirred up. We're going to make Satan even more mad. He will reveal his Christ, the Antichrist, and there will be a time of seven years on earth that will be called tribulation and great tribulation. And it's going to be bad. And those that did not receive Christ, they're going to have a choice. They can either choose Christ. As a matter of fact, that's the whole point of the tribulation is to give those who didn't choose Christ one more chance. Israel, Israel will change in a day. But some of us hard-headed ones, 
will put their hope in a political leader. And it will be about the economy. I don't know who said it first in America, but I, I, I remember it when Bill Clinton was running for president. They said, it's the economy, stupid. Y'all ever heard that phrase? They're looking for this, this personality, political figure, who will bring peace on earth. The only problem is he doesn't have peace to give. All he's got is deception. Who will come and, and promise prosperity. He just can't deliver. We're about to go into a political year. And I'm going to talk to y'all about it. Because some of y'all are confused. And I would tell you who to vote for. I just don't know. I vote for Jesus. Amen? Amen? He's my Lord. He's my president. He's my God. He's my Savior. He's my representative. He's my advocate. But there's a lot of people that think that somebody on earth is going to help them. But I'm not going to have to be around for that because I'm going to get called home. When he blows the trumpet, I'm out of here. Craig, you did a good job. I appreciate that. I asked Craig to, 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 to look that up and read that to us about the Battle of Altoona. Sherman was about to march on Atlanta. He actually went up on the Kennesaw Mountain to look with the field glasses, and he saw how it was. And it was his words... Hold the fort. I'm coming. Now, what Craig said was absolutely right. General Course, he said, was shot in the head three times. What y'all need to understand was he was shot dead in the face. And he was tired and he was weary. He had lost 800 right around him. 800. And he was ready to give up. But just like that shout that Jesus said, the shout of victory, when he saw the signal flag, the encouragement came. The strength went from here, I just got shot in the face, to here, we will not give up. We will give our last measure. We will not shut up. We will not slow up. We will not give up until we're called up. Church, we have a mission. Why do we preach about the second coming of Christ? Because it's imminent. But until then, we must go on singing. Until then, we must. We got family not saved. We got neighbors not saved. We're surrounded by all those people. And the problem is, we're not like Moody. We're not crying for them. Listen to the words of this song. Hold my comrades. See the signal waving in the sky. Reinforcements now appearing. Victory is nigh. See the mighty host advancing. Oh, Satan leading on. Mighty ones around us falling. Courage almost gone. See the glorious banner waving. Hear the trumpets blow. In our leader's name, we triumph over every foe. Fierce and long, the battle rages, church, but our help is near. Onward comes our great commander. Cheer, my comrades, cheer. Hold the fort, for I am coming. Jesus signals 
still. Wave the banner back to heaven. Answer him back. Lord, by thy grace, we will. I'm not saying you don't have problems. I'm not saying we don't have difficulties. I'm saying it will be worth it. Eternity began for me when I was born 22,386 days ago. It changed 11 years, uh, when I was 11, 10 years old. That was 51 years ago when I gave my heart and I gave my life to Christ. I haven't always been the soldier that I should have been. I got saved and thought I was through. Didn't understand my purpose. Didn't understand my calling. I kind of floundered around. Did things I shouldn't have done. I embarrassed my parents. I just wasted the talent. It was all about me. I could talk myself into any situation or out of any situation, or at least I thought I could. And I found myself feeling like I was shot in the face. But instead of Christ turning his back on me, he put his arms of love around me. Y'all ever been there? And he gave me another chance. I wish I could say I had been perfect since then. The best pastor, the best friend, the best husband, the best father. I haven't been. But God knows my heart. God knows my desires. I'm going to say the word again. Jesus is coming soon. Imminent. I pray that you hear the whisper of God today before the shout comes then. It's time to get busy. If you don't know Christ, give your heart and life to Christ. If you do know Christ, serve Him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You'll never regret it.